god, oh shit. Alright, let's do it. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, I forgot to mute. Can't get enough of Infendo Radio? Head to Infendo.com and see everything else we're up to. Collecting every coin so you don't have to. Infendo Radio is on now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Infendo Radio. I want to say 673, maybe? That sounds right. Is that right? We'll say that's oh, right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So uh, apologies in advance. Uh, yes, you're... 673. If you're one of our nine YouTube watchers, apologize, apologies for me not getting the episode up last week. I wasn't in it, so it was substantially less important to me than a normal episode. Um, so I just forgot that I had to do that. So I will probably get that episode up and this episode up like tomorrow by the time you're watching this. So tune in for that, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Infando Radio. We've got a show for you tonight. Um, we got the the three amigos, the regular boys here tonight. Steve's here too, but he's just listening. So you can't see him if you're watching this on YouTube. He's muted and his camera's off. But he's here I just can. hanging out, hanging out in the studio with us. Uh, Eugene, how you doing tonight? Where can the people find you? All that good stuff. Man, I'm doing okay. I'm tired as hell, though. This is my third cup of coffee I'm today. Tired. Um, so we're gonna figure out how that goes with sleep tonight and um, ulcers later in life. But um, <laughs> beyond <laughs> that, I'm doing fine. Um, I can't complain. Um, it except for that it was windy as hell at New Mexico today, and all of my neighbors' trash and leaves are now in my backyard. So kill, just not happy about that. I would kill for wind. We're getting I a am, snowstorm. I am. I would kill for that. I am Ganondorf in Wind Waker giving a speech about coveting. <laughs> you. It is just. Oh man. I, I'm pretty sure we had like 40 mile an hour winds. I don't think you wanted that kind of wind today. No, I'd take that honestly. My my dad. We were talking about winter storms, and my dad was like, "Oh, that's right. It's winter right now." Because you step outside and it's like 85 <laughs> degrees, and it just feels like death. It's just death out there. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I saw a. Uh... I saw something that some Floridian posted. They're like, it's like a uh, fake spring right now or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that sounds about right. It sounds about right. I mean, anyway, we get that Justin, up here in New York. How you doing tonight, Justin? Where can the people find you? We're still in the intro. Yeah, um, yeah. It's 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 snowing here as long as we're on the topic. Um, uh, no, I'm doing pretty well. I uh, got myself a little bit of a haircut for you know those of you watching. So little little less puffing out on the side um i'm nice. working on my website finally so you can go to the disneyparkbench.com and hopefully find some new material there sometime in the next week probably by the time you're listening to this on your pod phone um but uh yeah and follow me on twitter at infendo justin for my other stuffs all right, yeah, follow him on Fendo Justin for his other stuff. Um, I'm also doing well, for those of you that were wondering. I did not get a haircut. It's just all in the back right now, so that's what's going on with me. Oh, your green screen was hiding it. Yeah. See, it was, it was hiding yeah, it's back all, there. It's all, you it's have all... a ponytail? Oh, yeah, I got a big old ponytail. My goal is to get the ponytail to, like, oh, oh, you didn't know that to, like, full height kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I want you to get in. I have since college, like, 20 years ago. I want you to get a um, jar of jam like Ace Ventura and, and just, just like just go full grease on. it. Yeah, greasy, <laughs> greasy tail. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. Um, full, full on. Um, what's a uh, what's his face from um, Skyward Sword? I want it like Groose, like like, like Pompadour. Yeah, style. give me some yeah. Groose. I'm down. Give for that. me some Groose. I'll cosplay Groose this year for Halloween. I'm down. Um, anyway, we've got a, believe it or not, a show about Nintendo for you guys. In addition to <laughs> I all don't know. This. Uh, oh, so we got a couple of things to talk about tonight, but as Justin's alluding to, it's kind of a show about nothing because it's kind of a, it's kind of a quiet period for Infendo. But a couple of big things did go down this week that we kind of want to talk about. Uh, one of those, I guess, we'll start with kind of the, in my opinion, kind of the smaller news. Um, we have an upcoming Nintendo Direct about the Mario movie. Um, Eugene, do you remember the date for that? I do. It was March 9th, um, and it will be the final trailer, apparently. When does the Mario movie come out? Is that March 10th? Um, let's see if this article no, that I No, the trailer have. comes out March 9th. 
So um, why are they doing it on March 9th and not when March 10th? When does the 10th? Mario movie come out? Because March 10th is Mario Day. That's the whole gimmick. Every year they do Mario Day, you know, because it's M-A-R-10. That would have been when they should have put it out, huh? Yeah. Like, that really should have yeah, been. Yeah, I could see the, I could see the, well, like, is coming, to, by quite a while, so. coming to theaters on Mario Day. You know, like that kind of thing. Anyway, we got a, we got a Mario Direct, a Mario Movie Direct. I don't know about you guys. Um, I feel like I've watched this whole movie already. And I haven't even watched like half of the trailers. But every time I see a trailer, I feel like I see an entirely different scene from the movie. I feel like I know like everything that's in this movie. I've seen Mario Kart. I've seen Mario fighting Donkey Kong. I've seen Mario exploring the Mushroom Kingdom. I've seen Luigi trapped with Bowser. I've seen Peach going off to rescue her. I've seen, I've seen like every clip I feel like. So like, I, I just, I, I don't feel like I need more information on this movie at this point just give me the movie let me experience the movie are you guys with me or do you not care and you just like keep doing it <sighs> i was movies? i'm usually um that way honestly but like i cannot get away from the mario movie hype like because i watched the mm -hmm. super bowl um trailer and i was just like yeah okay i'm just gonna consume everything until <laughs> this freaking movie comes out because i'm just like that hype for it but again i'm not usually that way usually i'm like yeah you know lights out like i just don't want to know anything mm -hmm. going in you know but i don't know what it is about yeah this movie. i got so used to the marvel movies spoiling half the movie in the in the trailer that i stopped watching movie trailers but i'm the same way this mario movie has got me more excited than i've been for a movie in a while and i don't even think it's going to be like a fantastic movie i just I'm seven out I'm of ten. excited about yeah. it, and it seems like yeah. it's going to be really entertaining. If it's a it's seven weird. out of ten, I'll be happy. Honestly, it's it's yep. weird. I'm exactly. not that ex I'm not that excited for this movie, and um, I don't get that excited for movies in general. So I don't think that's that abnormal for me. But like, I just I, I like it's it's it it exists. It's going to be a thing that exists. But I can't. I I don't feel that that like. Oh, I got to see this kind of thing coming up. It's just kind of like yeah, yeah. That's going to be a thing that comes out, you know. And I'll probably watch it like a month after it does. Or honestly, I'll probably get dragged to the movie theater the day it comes out because <laughs> that's usually how my friends roll. Yeah, but um, but yeah, no. I mean, like it's it's going to be fine. I think. But I, I don't know. I just I'm not that. Not that hype, you know, and it's nothing against the movie. I don't have any like, you know, oh, it's made by Illumination, so it'll be garbage kind of opinions. I just, I'm just not that curious, I guess, you know, like it just feels kind of par for the course. So uh, do you think we'll get any exciting news with the direct or do you think it's just going to be like another trailer kind of thing? Like, why are they doing a direct? What's the point of that? I I don't know. I Just because to get people Nintendo. hyped. Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just to get people hyped. Maybe we'll find out there's some kind of like movie tie-in game. See, that would be cool. Okay, give me an open world Mario game with like the style of the movie. And that would get me hyped. That would give me that'd be then I'd be in. Then I'd be on the train. Sure. Boys. Like honestly, so, I, I I think Nintendo's seen what Sony has done with like, you know, Last of Us and what that's done for game sales of the Last of Us franchise, and they're like, okay, we gotta buy all in into this you know because this is our this is our this is mario you know yeah. this is our guy so if they can make this you know huge it's only going to help to increase sales on all their other properties you know so i think that's why they're like putting a lot of eggs in this basket basically yeah that's fair um probably a little premature to ask this but you guys want to see like more mario movies in the future you want to see a luigi's mansion movie you want to see a super princess i mean Beach if this movie? is good like... you know give if this is going to be good then give me more you know like i i hate I... to see franchises get rebooted after like only two movies but yeah. you know if it's if it's not good then why keep bothering but. I never thought that we would be on the verge of a Sonic the Hedgehog 3 movie and that I would be excited for it. But here we are. So in this in this age of video game movies, I think anything is possible, really, you know, like, and I don't know, it'd be kind of cool, like a Bowser movie or something. I don't know. Give me any of that stuff. I'd be I'd be down for it. All right. Well, yeah, I guess with and, that, I mean, everybody's been wanting a, a Zelda movie for God knows how long. So, you know, yeah, if we can finally get a good one of those. I think I'm in the, I guess, minority. I don't know. I don't know how many people care about this, but I don't really think I'd want a Zelda movie for the same reason that I don't really want like a, 
a, a, a really like vocal link or anything like voice acted Zelda games because I've always kind of felt like the Zelda games are supposed to be more of a literary experience if that makes any sense better read than listened to and all that and I think as soon as you go into making a better Zelda movie yeah as soon as you go into making a Zelda movie you have to choose between do we make Link speak and give him a personality and hope that it meshes with people's interpretations of this character who's 30 years old? Or do we leave Link silent and do a really weird, awkward type of movie where the main character never has any voice lines? You know, that kind of thing. And I, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like a character like Link is supposed to be so representative of the player and sure. so like unique to like your Link is different than my Link. I think that's where Metroid Other M tripped up. Because it was like the first Metroid game where they gave Samus a d distinct personality. Mm -hmm. And I think like over half of the fan base, myself not included on this one, but over half the fan base really disliked that distinctive personality. They thought she was whiny. They thought she was obsessive. They didn't like, you know, the, the way she monologued and stuff. And I, I think you run that risk with any character that's like you know, supposed to be representative of the player base rather than like a character like Mario, who's always kind of had that distinct, like, you know, woohoo, here we go kind of personality. Sure. Like, you know, Link is a hard one to write for. I think no matter what you do, you're going to do a lot of people incorrectly when you try to do Link. So um, I think I, you can be nervous. do it, but you have to, <laughs> I think you'd have to do it basically do it the same way that they're doing this Mario movie, because it seems like Miyamoto has been like super involved. So you would yeah. have to have like, you know, somebody from Nintendo, probably Aonuma, like super involved in the project. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it right. Like spend the money like they did with uh, what was the Netflix one? The, the Witcher with, uh, um, you know, Her Her yeah, Henry yeah. Cavill or whatever. Like, you know, that was a I mean, granted, like that was The Witcher is a story based uh, game, basically, like there's just tons and of And Geralt's always kind there. of had an established yeah. character. But but yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, well, I think do something like that. I think if you were going to do The Legend of Zelda, you know, and I'm getting flashbacks to the horrible like 80s or 90s cartoon or, well, excuse me. I, I was going to reference it, but, <laughs> yeah. you know. But um, but I think if you were going to do it, it would have to be in a standalone plot like you couldn't do an ocarina of time movie because that link has its right. own personality you know it'd have to be like a almost a hyrule warriors-esque kind of like and you know then they just be throwing references at the wall like they're doing with the mario movie and again i think, it'd I think have that... to be a series a show because like i can you a do... show would be interesting I, 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 it, so, either that or like a series of movies like a Lord of the Rings because like you know like there's a kind of a lot to if you want to tell a Zelda story like from you know child link to like a, I guess you would maybe you know what? tell its own story but I don't know like I think it would maybe you know what be I three would, movies you know what I would actually kind of enjoy we've been watching the show on Netflix Vikings that's all kind of like loose history of mm -hmm. like all these different you know like viking clans and stuff i would almost be kind of interested in a legend of zelda story and maybe i'm in the minority here maybe this isn't the right approach for like a casual audience but i would kind of like a story told from the perspective of different groups like kakariko village and hyrule castle town and the gorons and the zoras and the deku scrubs and the kakiri and mm -hmm. like um like That'd each episode, each episode is like an hour long and is kind of their encounter with the hero. And the hero is kind of a background character throughout these adventures doing his thing. So he doesn't have to be like in the front and center, but they're working with the hero to solve a problem kind of thing. So like we're introduced to different, like the, the chief of the Gorons or the princess of the Zoras and they work with the hero who's kind of just there doing his thing. Then you don't have to give Link like front and center personality kind of thing. And you can focus more on like the different, you know, elements elements of Hyrule but again I don't know if like a little kid would like that I think that's almost more for like a 30 year old fan but like uh you know I don't think that you're appealing to you know kids what that's at that kind of making me think yeah. of actually hmm. um it, it that makes me think of like the first season of the Mandalorian or basically the the inspiration the Lone Ranger where yeah. every episode the hero goes to a new location and yeah, solves yeah, a new yeah yeah problem and, and yeah kind of like that it's yeah, it's more episodic than It's serialized. more about what the hero is doing than who the hero is kind of thing. Yeah, I would almost think you would need that kind of a like a, a lack of focus on the main character. Because frankly, I'm not that interested in Link's like, like, like Twilight Princess where he's got like a girlfriend he's got to rescue. And so it's like, I didn't care about that part. You know, I cared about like Zelda and Ganondorf and Zant and Midna, you know, like 
that was more interesting to me than finding out that Link had like, you know, a, a, a house and a village where he raised goats, like, you know, that kind I of thing. I don't remember that storyline. What was the girlfriend? Who was the, the girl? Ilya? Ilya? Yeah, oh. she was oh, like, yeah. she gets kidnapped, she got kidnapped by the Bacoblin yeah, and her yeah, brain yeah, gets yeah, like yeah, white. Yeah, 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 yeah because yeah, it was yeah, so yeah, unimportant yeah, yeah. to the plot. <laughs> Because <laughs> the stuff that you care about is Midna and Zant and the Twilight Kingdom. And I, yeah, no, I totally back. forgot yeah. about that. My point exactly. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. <laughs> you know what else? Real oh, quick, and so I know this, is, this might just be the conversation. We might just kind of brush over the other thing because I'm having fun. But um, there was this, <laughs> do you guys remember like 10 or 15 years ago, maybe even 20, I don't know. There was a rumored game um called like the legend of zelda the great deluge or something like that it was supposed to be this oh, zelda yeah. game that they yeah. were working on i don't know why i obsessed over this plot but i found it really interesting as a kid it was you were supposed to play as link and he was going out on this quest to save the world from flooding right before wind waker takes place but come to find out you aren't really link at all you are a person who thinks he's the hero of time because he's read these stories and heard these legends and he's convinced that he's link and you find out like halfway through so the basically game the that story doesn't of Linkle. exist yeah pretty much it is pretty much what they did with Linkle. <laughs> you find out that you're not really link at all and that you're just this guy who, who's a little crazy who's trying to si save the world in absence of this hero you know a story like that could be kind of fun where they like they play at the the concept of link but it's not really link at all so you kind of get a free pass at like designing whoever you want like i don't know i feel like there are directions they could go where i could have fun with this but eh, kind of few and far between i guess um well, let's just breeze right through this next segment, I guess, because we did kind of go off on a tangent, but it was a fun tangent. I had fun with you guys. Yeah. Um, Microsoft signed a deal with Nintendo. I think we talked about this once before, like a month ago, but it's official now. Um, basically, it's like a 10-year contract, and they're going to be porting over or have the rights to port over or something along those lines. Um, the Call of Duty franchise that we've heard about. Um, some people go into a little bit more detail and say it can be more general than that, and that Microsoft and Nintendo are kind of just working together at this point. So there is kind of speculation that maybe we'll get some other stuff, but it seems to be specifically Call of Duty related. That's what at this I've point. heard. Yeah, it's yeah. just specifically Call of Duty. Yeah, and they've Call been talking about bringing Call of Duty to mm -hmm. Switch ever since they bought um, the heck uh, Activision, Activision or whatever it was yeah. they that they yeah um, Activision Blizzard, but. But mm -hmm. yeah, now they're actually talking about more like like Xbox, like actual Xbox Microsoft games. So yeah, it would be interesting to get. I mean, I know everybody on the Nintendo side is like, bring Rare Replay over, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, that belongs on Nintendo. But I would love to see like, you know, like Halo 1 and 2 or, you know, Crimson Sky, some of those like old, like first generation Xbox games get a mm -hmm. new life on the switch we know it can um, run it i've got a couple that i would like to see and i think they're fairly simple requests banjo tui i feel like should exist on the switch i don't know why it isn't already announced to be coming to the nintendo online the n64 online but i would like to see banjo tui make the cut um conquers bad third day or some variation thereof, maybe the the updated version. I don't think they would want to put that on the Switch Online service because I think it might be a little misleading to kids, frankly. And I think Nintendo does still kind of care about that if their kid booted into the game with a cute squirrel and then found out that it was a, you know, R-rated gore fest. But um, you know, it, it would be it would be interesting to at least get like maybe the the what is it, Conquer's Bad Fur Day Reloaded or something. I forget what the the title of the remake was the game yeah yeah the uh, it was the crap i can't remember that i have it too mm. well whatever well, yeah anyway the xbox version. And, i i yeah. i'd like to see them the xbox version was over. actually had like was... some real good improvements too i so i never played that game but i did watch an entire voiceless playthrough of that game so i feel like i played that game um and i watched the the up res port remake whatever and it was it was it was an entertaining watch you know bizarre um not quite my cup of tea but um you know it's definitely a game i think worth sure. being in the inclusion um diddy kong racing would be nice i think that one is oh a nintendo my. game don't but even maybe, mention that don't please maybe now don't. that microsoft is a little bit closer with nintendo maybe we could actually see that come out to the system that would be fantastic playing right? games with my heart 
uh perfect dark <laughs> would be fun to see as well i think see we're kind of getting into just like rare at yeah. this point for me like it's all but yeah like stuff, that's but... that's kind of what we want i think yeah from i mean I, catalog honestly i think i think i mentioned to you guys i would love to see halo 2 come over just because i remember playing that one as a wee little little whippersnapper Xbox back in the day especially cool. with uh especially yeah. with online multiplayer because that it, was ooh. the yeah. most online multiplayer i've ever played was on halo 2. It, if we're talking hey uh xbox um like wants i guess pie in the skies i want fable i want the fable franchise on fable would be fun Switch. i tried fable on pc and i could not get that far and i think See, part I, of that was because it was on pc the same kind of with me because I, I didn't play it on pc but i played it just like on console and i was like ah but it's like an rpg-ish type game and i've always yeah. wanted to play rpg games like that on handheld and yeah. hey yeah yeah, Fable would be Fable would be fun. Fable would be a big one for me. I don't know. There's a lot that I want to see. Frankly, Call of Duty is kind of at the bottom of my list. Um, I just replayed Modern Warfare 2 on PC like a month ago. And it was good. It was it was a fun little like four hour romp. Oh my god. Yeah? I just had a funny thought. What if we end up getting the Activision remake of Goldeneye? Oh, that would be weird. That would be really weird. <laughs> right? Possible. Like the weird. game that they released because they couldn't release the original. Well, we have the original. Now play the remake. Yeah, I could see that actually. They do that a lot, I feel like, with game. Like you can like half of the games you can play on those like ported, like, you know, the Game Boy or the the Sega Genesis or whatever. You can also buy as standalone games like Sonic 2 and stuff. So I could definitely see them kind of bungling the hat and including that as a purchasable game. And I know there's people out there like you that would buy it, Justin. So there's definitely justification for it, I think. So I would. I mean I started replaying that a couple of weeks ago. The only reason I stopped was because I promised my wife I'd uh blow through The Last of Us as quickly as possible so we could watch it Jeez, <laughs> yeah i don't know i feel like there is potential for there to be some good stuff um anything we didn't talk about on there that you guys wanted to bring up any games you really want to see or that kind of thing or have we no, pretty I much mean, crossed that wish list on, honestly just along the call of duty line um i would just love to see that um warzone mode somehow make it over to switch because that's like basically um it's like PUBG or um, yeah. uh, like Fortnite, basically, but in Call of Duty skin. I think that'd be cool to have on the on the Switch. I don't know how that would run though, because it like ran like garbage on my series. No, not my series. My uh, Xbox One. Yeah, Xbox. God, I hate the naming of Xbox. By the way, I, I like it's rough. <laughs> have to think about it. Um, but yeah, my Xbox One original console, like it just ran like garbage on that. So I don't know how it would work on the Switch, but it would be cool to like, you know, have some kind of down res version that ran well. They did it with you, Fortnite. So like, you know, let's do it. If it makes you feel any better, Eugene, about the whole naming thing. Um, I've gotten to the point where my Switch is so irrelevant to me. I've started calling it a Wii again. So, <laughs> oh no. Like, I, I literally the other day I was like, oh, let me just grab my Wii. And then I was like, that's not right. That's not even right. Last generation. So, like, you know. <laughs> Yeah. At least you're not just calling it a Nintendo, like uh, you know, um, a mom. Grab my Game Boy. They're, yeah, they're, they're all Nintendos. Uh huh. Everything's a Nintendo. Every yep. time Justin's background blacks out, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, he goes into like this pit of darkness, and it just really throws me. Like I, I'm, I'm convinced Hello, that like his internet is shutting down or something. It's, it's a whole thing. I wonder why it's blacking out. It should be an hour long loop, but eh. anyway. Uh, well, anyway, I think we've pretty much run the gamut on this topic, so we're going to pivot over to change the system, talk about the games we've been playing. I'm excited because I wasn't here last week, and I think the week before that we did like um, like a, a different show where we didn't have time for change the system, so I have a lot to talk about, but I would like you guys to go first so I can sufficiently waste our viewers' time at the end of the hour. So. Let me go first so then we can do a pyramid because I feel like mine's going to be the shortest, Justin's going to be the medium, and Lucas is going to be our change the system base. I'm so, be that, that, that sweet, sweet base. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about the games I've been playing, which is honestly not much. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go, honestly, because I got a. Um, dang, I wish I had it with me, but I got this new um, like auto catcher device, basically. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's kind of like the gotcha, if you've heard of that. But the, um, the difference being is that it's a little bit bigger. I mean, a lot bigger, actually. It's kind of like a disc. 
Um, but also it is, it, it can control two devices at the same time. So mm. that's been really good for, um, me and my wife, because like, you know, when she goes out, she'll like, you know, take my phone with her so that she can like go, um, you know, catch the Pokemon for me type of thing. It's called the mega com. I think it's by Mick bezel or something like that. Is it from what I'm looking at here? That's on definitely the... not an embezzlement scheme in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but if you type a uh, dual catchmon onto your um, Amazon um, search or whatever, you'll probably pop it up or another clone device like it. But I know I love it a lot. It's great. That thing is cool. Um, it's kind of probably cheating, but who cares? Like I, you know, whatever. Like I need my I need my shiny mons. Um, so, can we have mm -hmm. a quick discussion about the Jirachi event while we're in Pokemon Go mode? Is Let's. I'd kind of like to talk slash vent slash warn about that for everybody involved. So from what yeah. I've seen, a lot of people online are actually excited for this one because the people who play Pokemon Go, I guess, really play Pokemon Go and they live for the grind. So I think I'm in the minority here, maybe, among Pokemon Go players. The Jirachi event, for those of you who don't know, just went live, I want to say, two days ago. I think it was the 20th of uh, February. It is a chance to catch Shiny Jirachi. Now, Shiny Jirachi is pretty rare because um, he's back in, like, Gen 3. There's not a lot of ways to get him, and he's very hard to move over to the modern system. So this is kind of a big one. Unfortunately, he is locked behind some hard requirements. So first, you have to give the game $5, five real-world dollars to participate in the event, which isn't that unusual. And for you can't even use your coins. Money. You can't you know, use you have coins. To pay you money. have to use real money. Once you do that, you then see the first set of requirements. Now, there are six tiers of requirements to do before you get Jirachi. The first one is to catch 385 Kanto Pokemon, 385 Johto Pokemon, and 385 Hoenn Pokemon. And then once you do all that and have a gold medal or something that I already had because I've played this game for like five years, then you get to go on to the next one. Um, that's a lot of Pokemon. So I'm going to be doing this event for quite a while. Event two, the second part of the event, is to have made 10 best buddies by interacting with your Pokemon every day until they become your best buddy. That's a slow grind. This is going to be a long, I don't even like doing that with grind. real people. No, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm reminded of playing RuneScape here. Like I'm already grinding in RuneScape. I'm doing a lot of grinding in a video game. I don't want to be doing this in another game, so I'm going to be here for like a year and a half. Before I get through this thing, dude, like it's it's intense. Now Eugene tells me his wife is like halfway done. <laughs> you know, some people are much better at the game than me, and I'm sure Eugene would tell me all of that himself if he weren't muted at the moment. Oh, I was just gonna say the <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, no, we, but you know we have this auto catcher though, so it's like yeah, you know, it helps it's, it's at least for like that cheating. step. Yeah. Now, True. how many best how many best buddies do you have? I'm curious. Are you like there already, or do you have to like? grind that part of it out. Are you all best buddied out? Yeah, of course it is. So, <laughs> see, this is going to be nothing for you. I'm over here sweating, like sweating hard playing this game now. So this has become my like my background background game. When I have nothing else to do and I'm bored to tears, I open Pokemon Go and I catch like 10 Pokemon. And I just know that the shiny Jirachi is going to be something that I catch when I'm like 35, you know? And I just have to accept that because it's not happening right now. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> sure. But uh, yeah, that's uh, Pokemon Go is always a grind like that, you know? So uh, I don't know. Like, I, I love it though for some reason. Even though I a lot hate of people it, do. I love they it. like that grind. But the. There was a recent event that uh, I had some good success with. I had the Noibat um, event ah, was uh, either last week or the week before. I got like 12 of those bad boys, so that was fun. But we actually like went out, out and like, you know, did the event. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we tried. But um, yeah, no, that was fun. Um, I was satisfied with the results there. The only other thing that I want to talk about in my change of system segment is that, um, A, I'm sorry, Nintendo Switch, I have not turned you on in forever. However, I have a um, date with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet um, this weekend. I've told myself I'm going to boot that thing up. I need to finish that freaking game because I bought it twice. So, like, I got to at least beat it once. Even, you haven't even done the thing yet. The the thing. I haven't the thing done any of the says, I, I got the my thing first badge. Like, 
God, dude, people like people are like, yeah, the game chugs during the beginning, but once you get to X, you you get really. So, do you? Uh, I have a question for you. I don't want to spoil anything for you or for our listeners. Although, shame on you guys for not having beaten this game by now. Um, are you aware of the unique mechanic that's different between the two games at the end of the game? No. Okay. Wow. Get through this game. <laughs> I definitely want to get through. Um, I don't Which think one you are you were... playing? Oh, God. The one with the blue guy. Uh, so, Violet. Yes. Violet. Okay. Cool. That should be fun for you, then. I think you'll like that one a little bit more. I liked Scarlet a lot. I also really liked Violet. Violet's kind of cool. Violet's got a cool <laughs> gimmick. I, I don't want to talk about it too much until I actually get playing in it, but, like, I, I, I think I said this in the past. Like, I just could not get past the jank. Like, it just, like, oh, my God, I just could Like, when I'm, like, going up a thing, and then, like, the freaking bushes are popping up to, like, the right of me. I don't know why, but, like, that just, like... It just yeah. like to so took me out of the game for some reason, but I'm ready. I'm going to go in with a fresh mindset, like knowing the, you know, like what the game is. Cause I actually had fun when I was actually like catching Pokemon and stuff like that. So that was actually still enjoyable. But uh, yeah, now that I kind I, of uh, have a better mindset, I think I'm going to enjoy it better. I, I will say, I think it's a game that's much better enjoyed when you turn the lights off, put on your headphones and play it nice and peaceful in like a two or three hour game session kind of thing. Then if you try to get through it in like 20 minute bursts here and there kind of thing. I don't know how available that is for you, given your home life and everything. But, um, you know, it, it. I think it's the kind of game that's better enjoyed, kind of like slow and steady, you know, just enjoy, like Breath of the Wild style, you know? You're going to go into it, you're going to explore, you're going to see things, you're going to do things kind of thing, as opposed to trying to like really like, you know, goal orient. Now, like, Steve might completely disagree with me because he's a very goal oriented person kind of thing. And he also got through the game, but I find it very relaxing. It's like a kind of just, I'm going to go see the world and maybe find another gym badge kind of thing. So just my personal advice to you, feel free to take it or ignore it at your leisure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, hey, I'll, I'm going to take it at this point because I, I like again, like I said, I really want to get back into this game. So I just kind of got I kind of got to go in with a better mindset, I feel. And then, you know, I'll. Uh, well, there was a lot of negativity surrounding it at the beginning. And I think it's kind of easy to get kind of caught up in that, like, you know, that whirlpool of emotions and everything where it's like, well, everybody's everybody's pissed off. So I'm going to be, you know, less interested in it kind of thing. I know I've done that with games in the past where it's like, you know, if everybody tells me that something is bad, I start seeing the bad in it too. So, you know, sure. maybe, or maybe it's just not, you know, like Mario Odyssey wasn't your game. Maybe it's just not your game, but I hope you can get through it. Cause there are some really cool surprises to be had, especially at the very end of it, once you've done all sure. the main objectives and everything. So hopefully you get your, your money's worth out of it at least, you know? Right. Yeah, totally. Meanwhile, but, uh, I have sworn that I will not be getting or playing this game since I already have Let's Go Pikachu, um, Sword, or Shield, I guess, is the one that I have, uh, which, whichever the Diamond Pearl remake and Arceus, and I haven't beaten any of them. Or you're, not a, close, so you're not a I'm, good Pokemon I'm, player. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not. Every every one that's come out on the Switch, I'm like, this is going to be the one that I beat because it's so good. And then I lose interest. So you never I've get just, into I've it. Just yeah. decided, it's not I've your just series. decided that the Pokemon games I have are the ones that I'm going to keep. And I'm, until the next system comes out, I'm not getting another one. Well, once Eugene reaches the end of the game, then I will officially start spoiling it on the show. So those of you listening at home, you have until he finishes, <laughs> Just whatever like, that do is, it. <laughs> to start talking. So get going. Oh, so now it's on me. Okay, fair now enough. it's on you. It can go a year. It can go a day. It's all on it's you. It's up to you to spoil everything, Eugene. <laughs> well, it's up to you to take change the system after you're done chugging that Dr. Pepper, Justin. Uh, what you got going on? Well, now you made me sad because this is a Coke and I do have Dr. Pepper and I would have rather had that. <laughs> um, yeah, um, my change of system's not dissimilar from last week. Uh, played a few more hours of The Last of Us. Um, like I said, I'm trying to finish that game as quickly as possible so that my wife and I can sit and watch the series. Um, I've been playing quite a bit of metroid 
Prime, and as a matter of fact, I think I've actually finally made it as far as I've ever made it before. How you like so, it? So, um, I might actually get closer to the end of this game than ever before. Um, so that's nice. I forget. You're liking it? Like, the game <laughs> goes quickly once you know what you're doing. And I forget that because, you know, I'm just used to these big, open, uh, first person shooter games you know just taking hours on end to beat and are you doing Metroid the easy Prime mode or whatever would... yeah i'm i'm doing casual which which is yeah. nice cuz um you know like i i started metroid dread all over again in rookie mode because like i don't have time to just bang my head against against a boss for hours on end like i the way I play games, once I figure out the boss's attack pattern and weak point, that should be it. It should be just a piece of cake to beat it after that. And if it's if it comes down to, yeah, you have to memorize all this stuff, plus you have to have hyper-fast reflexes, I'm 41 years old. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I'm I'm every time I've played Metroid Prime, I have loved it. And every time I have gotten stuck i've fizzled out and not beaten it i'm determined to beat it this time especially since i can sit and play it while you know watching tv with my wife because well i might do less of that now because i'm reaching a point that i've never been to before so it's not so much see, just like muscle memory stuff but see every um, time i've played metroid prime i've hated it or i've been disinterested like to a point of neutrality and i want to like it because everybody says it's good and even games that I dislike, I like to finish and then play multiple times to make sure that I dislike them. And like this one, I just, I never seem to get much farther than the first boss. I just find it very, it's got like the the confusing world layout of, of Super Metroid without the convenient, I can see the entirety of the world on a screen because it's 2D kind of thing. And that's where I find I, I start falling out is like, you know, maybe if I had a guide, it would feel less you know confusing for me but at that point i'm not really playing the game i'm following instructions on how to play a game you know so i i do think having it on so, the switch might be the key because i can sit down in bed and just kind of like you yeah know, it's not a project it's a and it's the a switch hobby version kind of thing. the switch version adds something at least i think it was added for the switch version where the if doors. you yes <laughs> okay Yes, they're 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 a great band. I don't know what that has to do with, with Metroid Prime. No. Um if you wander around aimlessly without accomplishing any goals for long enough, it'll remind you, kind of like Navi, hey, listen, it'll be like, hey, something's going on over in this spot in the map. You should head that way. So that has been a big help for me, because like there's a certain point in the game, every time I've played it, I've gotten completely lost. Um it's Shortly after I get to Fendrana Drifts, and there's like a certain place that I have to go to that I always like miss, like I just don't see it, which is one of the problems with Metroid in 3D that you don't get so much in 2D is it's a lot harder for them to telegraph, look, there's a secret passageway here. Um, but um, yeah, so I was wandering around aimlessly for probably a good hour or so, and then all of a sudden I get this little notification like, hey something's going on over here you should go that way i'm like oh that's where i should be going and so then i can pull up the map and be like all right i gotta get to this elevator and get to that section sure. that might help you out because that's certainly helped me out and like really every metroid game should have that for the people like me who get adhd and forget what they're doing after about five minutes <laughs> sure yeah, I, I always um, liked the Metroid games, but I mean, I, I'm kind of with Lucas in that Prime was very, um, like, you had to get intimate with those maps because, like, they're confusing, you know? And especially, like, yeah. when you get to, like, Magmore Caverns, I feel, and, like, the Phazon Mines, like, everything just kind of looks samey. Um, so, and then the map is, the map is good, I guess, but the 3D maps are kind of hard to read, in my opinion. And, um, you know, so you, yeah. you can kind of get lost. I remember even struggling with that in uh, Metroid Dread, and that game was basically 2D. But the sure. maps were laid out in like an awkward kind of like pseudo 3D style. And I remember thinking like, 
where the hell am I supposed to go? <laughs> like, what am I, what am I doing? I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess to a degree, the Metroid games have just never really been my cup of tea. Like I like a good Metroid, but there is a lot of, it's, it's not a game that you sit down and play in an hour, you know, it's a, it's a project. It's, it's, I'm going to sit well, down I mean, you can and I'm going to explore. The original Metroid in 45 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, if you're actually good at it or cheat. It's it's just it's it's always going to be kind of a project I think to play those games so maybe that's kind of where my trepidation comes in but I think just that combined with the 3D aspect makes it kind of overwhelming for me compared to some other games but eh, is what it is I think the Switch version smooths a lot of the problems out um, I was saying uh, last week that the controls are much more intuitive in this because you can. You have the dual stick controls of a regular first person shooter, plus you also have the lock on controls of Metroid Prime. So it's a lot easier to find your target, hit your target, um, and also maneuver around. Um, I don't know. Try it. Don't try it. I'm sure they'll have like a, a trial of it one of these days and you can give it a try and see what you think. I, I think this is the version that i'm going to beat though because it is so much more comfortable to play and i'm doing so much better on it it's got some quality of life things that that really improve the experience for me um so you know there's that uh i did finally finish the last of the regular puzzles in picross the other day picross 1s uh, by the way, so I haven't even done two, three. I think they're up to nine now. Um, I'm doing some of the Mega Picross puzzles, which are fine. I can't imagine doing those in the 20 by 15 grid, though, because Mega Picross is confusing enough as it is. So the way it works is you'll have certain things that are grouped into, like, instead of there are this many in this row or column, there's this many in these two rows or columns, and you have to figure out, like, if it says eight. Okay, so somewhere in here, eight uh, boxes are grouped together. But you can't figure out from that how they're grouped together. So it could be eight of them in a row. It could be two blocks, blocks of two by two, so it's like two, four, six, eight. It could be two, four, five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight. Like, it's 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 weird and i can't imagine doing it in some of the bigger more complicated ones i think the next time those picross games go on sale i'm just going to get the second one and and move on to regular picross games um last thing i think worth mentioning is uh i've been doing some serious 3d printing i've got my uh my rupee here uh that i printed this is the first thing i printed after i got my successful uh boat that is the kind of prerequisite first print for everyone, apparently. Um, and then after that, I'm like, all right, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to print something big. That was kind of a mistake. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think pretty much everybody been, goes through the, I want to print something, and then immediately follows that up with, rupees are fun to print, because I also have like four rupees sitting in my room <laughs> from when I started 3D printing. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pretty, I think it's a so pretty common a starter model. <laughs> So what I what I wanted was uh, so my switch dock sits on the on the TV stand. I pull up my camera, but the the TV stand's a mess, and I don't want anyone to see it. But it sits on my TV stand, and then the TV's mounted on the wall about I don't know, like maybe a foot above it, and it's not quite high enough for the switch dock to fit comfortably under or behind it. So when I go to put the switch in, I'm always like trying to juggle to get it into the dock and so what i wanted to do was set it up horizontally well you can't set it up horizontally because it'll slide out so what somebody had designed on um, thingiverse is a slightly angled horizontal stand so you set the dock in it it leans for it like leans forward at about i don't know like this much of an angle so you can still slide the switch into it, but it's almost horizontal, so it takes up less, you know, vertical space. I'm like that's perfect. It's a simple thing. It's just a box. Well, um, so I ended up melting the first few layers because I forgot to turn <laughs> the uh, the heat level on the bed off, um, and then I ran out of filament at about 
uh, I didn't look at this at where it was, but it had to have been at least 95%, maybe even 99% uh, ran out of filament. So it's mostly done. Um, and then I couldn't get the supports off of it, which it said it didn't need supports, but things like at a wedge shape. I'm like, how the hell is this supposed to support its own weight? Um, long story short, I got the supports off of it. And, Time out. Uh, you can, you, you need to change the angle of where it's printing so you probably could have like changed it so that it was like straight up and down that's probably how it didn't need supports maybe or like flip it upside down i, I yeah. might try another one after i get the my i get another spool of of white pla coming tomorrow i think i might try it again but you know what it, like it came out imperfect but it is perfectly functional so you know it worked out so you know, maybe I am ready to start doing more, <laughs> more complicated things. Like I just need to remember to not leave the bed on ninety degrees when uh, you know I'm printing. Oh damn, that's a hot bed. Ninety there. Yeah, well, I turned it up that hot because like I was having trouble with those first few layers adhering, and then they just start dragging it all over the place. So I found out that if the bed's hot, it just kind of sticks to it but i didn't know like like when i printed the boat successfully i did like okay it's like 85 or 90 for the first i don't know 10 percent. then i'll bump it down to 75 for the next 10 percent. then i'll bump it down to 70 for the next. and so i did that the problem is five percent of a 16 hour print is still long enough to completely like melt the bottom layers so it's a learning process i'm enjoying it um i uh, i think it's going to be a really useful tool i told my my wife was like you know, why did you want this thing what do you need for it? like i look at this as like it's like having a circular saw or an or a powered screwdriver or something like that this is a tool when i need something i use the tool to make it and yeah you know it's it's and I think it will serve a lot of purposes, but I just have to get that, you know, get it down to that art form that, you know, like Eugene was saying, I don't know whether this was on the show or, or in a private chat, but you, you were telling me about how you'll, you'll wake up in the morning at about, you know, 15 and a half hours into a 16 hour print, it fails. And that's yeah. more or less what happened to me, but yeah, uh, fortunately it did not catastrophically fail. So lucky me one of these <laughs> days i will get good enough that i can print the pieces to make that ben solo lightsaber hilt that i really want <laughs> but that's about that's about it a uh, handful of video games and 3d printing nice all right well i guess i will take over then um like i said i have a lot to talk about but we got about seven minutes left before we hit the hour mark. So I'm going to try to be quick about this and breeze through a lot of these games. Um, Monster Hunter. I've been playing Monster Hunter. I think your time, Eugene and I did. I've been playing it with Steve. Um, it's fun. It's a good game. It's still a good game. I don't really have much to say about it because it's still Monster Hunter. But if you like that kind of stuff, and we do, then you'll like this. Um, I will say this is the one that, that Steve ran away with compared to me. Um, I like monster hunter rise but i don't love monster hunter rise and steve loves monster hunter rise so he's like really putting a lot of time and energy into like building the perfect character and model and everything and he's got all these sure. weapons and armor and stuff he's got this like invincible build he found online that he's been doing and like i just i get on and i play a few rounds and i do my thing we've kind of reached the point where like the content he wants to do isn't content that I can do because I only have 350 hours in the game and he's got like 450 so you hours have to in get the game. like a higher rank or whatever or the just thing is. Do the yeah. stuff that we can do together and accept that he's just kind of going, you know, beyond at this point. But yeah, I don't know, for some reason, this one, um, it didn't grab me quite as much as some of the other ones did. And I don't know exactly why that is. I think honestly, I think I'm still a little bitter about um, Monster Hunter World and how we've kind of deviated from the Nintendo love to being kind of like the side game system again. But it kind of is what it is. You know, if, if the series is just kind of 
moving in a different direction from me then that's just kind of kind of where we are but i know i still put a ton of time into it so a clearly i still course, enjoy it, it you know yeah kind of just how it goes i feel it's like but, every uh, franchise in the past five years has done that to you yeah it's been it's been kind of a rough one although i've discovered some new ones so i've kind of been pivoting a lot um talking about old games but games i've been playing with steve donkey kong country 3 we started that last <laughs> week and that has been a fun little romp um, I won't talk about that in too much detail because if you want to experience that firsthand, I've been posting those to my YouTube channel, Lucas Peace. I think the first two episodes are up right now. I'm trying to do a Monday, Wednesday posting schedule. So just kind of tune in and watch us play what we consider to be the worst of the three Donkey Kong Country games, but still a decent game in its own right. So um, it's, that's I mean, that. It's saying <laughs> something when the worst Donkey Kong Country game it's is still, still better than a lot of games. Yeah, out there. sure. And, right? and we kind of, we kind of said as much, you know, like for all of its faults and it's kind of odd choices in design, like literally in the first world, you go from a boardwalk to an ice world within like one tile of each other. And it's kind of weird. That's a weird choice, you know, but like, it's fine. It is what it is. It's just it's just doing its own thing. So I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna hundred percent it. And then I told Steve we have to go back and one hundred percent Donkey Kong Country One because we haven't done that one yet. That's um about only... Donkey Kong Country One and Donkey Kong Land One are the only games I've ever done everything in. I have done I did three by myself back in college. I played it on the 3DS and I got through everything for some reason. Um Donkey Kong Country 2, Steve and I did together. We 100 percent of it. Donkey Kong Country 1, when we played that, we did kind of a different challenge toward the very end of the series. Because you know, it was the first one that we started recording together. We decided we weren't going to save at all because we did the entire thing in a single night. And um wow. we said we said if we die, then we die, and that's it. And we ended up getting through it. The whole thing took us like five and a half hours, I think, four and a half hours. And um, yeah, we got through the game without dying. It was kind of cool because for a while there, we were getting pretty close to death. And I was like, all right, Steve, if we die, we lose everything. You know, let's just let's let's roll the dice. You, but you created a Donkey Kong you, Nuzlocke. You Nuzlocke. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we got the Donkey same place. Kong country. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was uh, it was a it was a fun little kind of spontaneous challenge we set up. Uh, but yeah, that's Lucky Kong Country Three. It's it's been fun. Um, I've also been playing very briefly an indie game that came out a couple weeks ago called Pizza Tower. Have you guys heard about this one? It's no. um it's basically Wario Land, but like indie Wario Land. So you you run around, you climb up walls, you smash into things. There's a timer at the end, and you have to escape the world and stuff. Very Wario Land. Uh, the gimmick is that the whole thing is kind of hand drawn, so it kind of looks like you're watching almost like a Ren and Stimpy cartoon or something along those lines. Um, it's interesting. It's fun. I only played the What's first this level. Game again? Pizza Tower. It's available on Steam. I think that's the only thing that's available. I... Right now. It's funny that you are talking about a pizza game because I haven't been playing it, but I was watching this Let's Play of somebody playing this game called Infinite Pizza, and that looked cool huh. as hell. So maybe it's just pizza month in maybe February. Maybe it's pizza month. Yeah, who knows? But, you know, I recommend giving it a try. If you like Wario Land, you like this one. Um, I'm I'm fine with it. It didn't it didn't blow me away when I played the first level, but I really didn't get that far. And it's it's a good game. It's well designed and everything. So. Give it a try if you're really itching for a new Wario Land and there hasn't been one since like the Wii, you know. Um, I played SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake like eight months ago, back when we were doing this show, like right after Christmas or whatever. And I I haven't I haven't been able to talk about it for one reason or another. It's good. It is basically just a spiritual success. Actually, it's like a, a genuine like successor to um Battle for Bikini Bottom, which was the GameCube game that just got remastered. Oh right. I think it uses the same engine, honestly. Um, really cool, really fun. Don't really have anything special to say about it. They actually got Clancy Jones or whatever his name is to be um, Mr. Krabs in this one. So you don't have that awkward, ahoy there, SpongeBob kind of voice thing that you had before. Of course, there's no Mermaid Man because um, the guy, I forget the guy's name, Mikhail's Navy guy, he, he uh, Ernest Borgnine. Yeah. yeah, he died like 20 years ago or whatever. But, uh, you know, for the most part, like the whole voice cast is there and everything. It's, it's nice. Has it been it's 20 cool. years since he died? Maybe 10. I don't know, but it's Ooh, been a while. You just gave me a, an, I'm an old as hell heart attack. Uh, Mermaid Man on. has not, Mermaid Man has not been around for quite a while. And it's, honestly, it makes me sad. You know, you get to like the retirement home and it's just like a random fish standing out there and you're like, it should have been Mermaid Man, you know, but 
it is what it is. But no, the game is good. If you liked um, Battle for Bikini Bottom, you'll like this one. If you like um, traditional kind of 2000 eras, 3D platformers with a little collect-a-thon mentality, you'll like this game. So give it a try if that sounds like it's up your alley and you really like SpongeBob. Otherwise, probably not for you. Um, RuneScape. Been playing RuneScape. Don't really have too much to say. I got my first 99. I hit 99 farming the other day, so I got a cool cape and everything. Nothing. And I look all snazzy and whatnot. So now I'm doing Slayer and Magic and all those other skills. But RuneScape is still RuneScape. I don't really have anything to say about it, except that today was the beginning of the 10th anniversary of Old School RuneScape. 10 years ago today, I think, or 10 years ago within this time period, they um, officially revitalized the old 2007 version and made it old school and started working on the game again. So that was kind of cool. You know, we got a bunch of cool little neat cosmetics and stuff today, and that was fun. I had a good time. Uh, the last one I want to gush over for a couple minutes is an old one, but I've been playing it in a very new way, and that is Skyrim. Yes, Skyrim is back. Um, so I started up a Skyrim account yesterday, an account, I started up a, a file yesterday on Skyrim, um, and I decided I'd play it on my new, like, Lucas account on the Switch, because everything else was on my old version from, like, before I did all the transferring and stuff, and I was like, yeah, screw that, I'll start from the very beginning on a brand new character and just kind of, kind of start fresh on an account that I know I'll have in 10 years if they poured over Nintendo systems and all that stuff. Um, so I started up the character and I get out of the tutorial cave after you decide with either the storm cloaks or the Imperials at the beginning. And it gives me a message that I've never had before. And I've played this game thousands of hours, you know, over PC. And like, I started playing this game in like 2013. So it's been like 10 years now that I've been playing this game. And all of a sudden I see a message and it says, um, would you like to activate uh, the, I forget what it's called, like anniversary mode or whatever. They're like, um, this will oh, include yeah. your your temperature being affected oh, sure. by the weather outside and hunger and tiredness that you can recover from sleeping. Also, you can only I level up no when you that, sleep in a bed. <laughs> I said yes to that because I was like, you know what? Of course you did. I was just, I was just going to do You're a, a masochist. Random, yeah, I was like, I was just going to do a random playthrough and kind of have fun with it. You know, I just watched the Puss in Boots movie and I wanted to make a cat, a Khajiit and run around with do. a sword and stab people. <laughs> what, what is I was in the mood to be, I was in no, the mood as to you be do. Catman, as you do. And, um, and then I was like, you know, I've always like, I usually play the game that way anyway. Like I bundle up for cold weather and I eat like every day, even though I don't have to. I was like, this will be a fun extra little like kind of hurdle to overcome in the game and stuff. So I do that. And one of the things it tells me right off the bat is, okay, you're a Khajiit. You're a cat person. You're allowed to eat raw meat without getting sick. And I'm like, that's cool. Because normally you can just eat raw meat without getting sick. But in this version, I can only do that because I'm a cat person. And then it's like, oh, by the way, you're more resistant to cold and less dance, resistant dance, to dance, heat. And you dance, dance, dance. Be yeah, because I'm a cat person. <laughs> so like, there's all these new things that I'm learning about. And I'm wanting to make like 10 characters so I can see how every character overcomes like environmental challenges. Then I look at the list of um, <laughs> new quests that are available. We have lost I'm looking... Lucas. He is just gonna. He's he's just gonna I, be I Skyrim told you for this the next was... year and a half. I told you this was gonna be a thing. <laughs> So I'm looking at the installed content list and I didn't realize that this update came with like 40 new quests to do. Like there's like a bone wolf that you can summon that responds to how you treat it and becomes your friend over time as like a summon. There's um, these two new bandit groups that the Khajiit merchants asked me to stop. There's a challenge where I get to team up with a Stormcloak or an Imperial and like partake in a challenge in an arena kind of thing. There's a lot of new content that I've never seen before. So I feel like I'm playing like a brand new version of this game that I thought I had seen everything in and done everything in. And I'm having a really fun time with it. Like I'm really, there's new armor, there's new weapons, there's all kinds of new like classes of armor and weapons I've never seen before. I, I, I get to kind of like rediscover this game that I love. And I'm, I'm honestly kind of excited to jump back into it after the show because I've been having a lot of fun with it. Last night was a cool night. So, hey. Yeah, when I bought good. the anniversary edition expansion, like I really, really wanted to get obsessed with that game again, but I've just got too many things. You know, I'm juggling too many plates already. But yeah, mm -hmm. like when I first started playing Skyrim, that became my Breath of the Wild, the game that I played all day, every day, and just obsessed over. And then fizzled out after a lot of that stuff got old. But with all this new stuff, I'm like, I really want to play it. And every time I turn it on, I'll play it for you know, a couple of hours at least, mm -hmm. but 
It is. And it's another game kind of like what I was saying to Eugene about Pokemon, where like, it's much better, in my opinion, when you sit down and you turn off the lights and you plug in the headphones and you just get lost in the world for a night, you know, sure. as opposed to like, I've got 20 minutes. Let's go raid a bandit, game, you know, that kind of thing. Right. But um, it is and will be for a very long time, I think the game that I hold all other open world games to as like the standard for like, this is what I expect from a game. I've compared Breath of the Wild to it a number of times. Um, you know, I've, I've compared a lot of the well, open so world Well, so do games. the developers, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Like they, but, um, they specifically cited Skyrim and Elder Scrolls as inspiration for Breath of the yeah, Wild. So. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I do, I hold those types of games to that standard because Skyrim just did something for me man like the amount of of things that i discovered in that game 10 years after i started playing it even before the anniversary stuff came out just mind-boggling to me there's entire quest lines i never saw npcs that i never encountered that had unique things for me to do like a town that i never saw that was off the beaten path like all kinds of stuff sure. so like it it really will be i think for me for a very long time that that kind of gold standard of you know, just, just lose you, Lucas. yourself. If I end up playing, <laughs> Come back I end up to me, playing baby, Skyrim girl. tonight instead of anything else that I want Come or need back to, to play, me. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, well, I'm excited. You're making so, me so want to. I'm getting off now because, you know, I've got this thing, but but I just want to say, like, I, I started it. I started the game. I went to the first area, Bleak Falls Barrows, and I was going to do the quest, and I was like, this will be easy and chill and whatever. And all of a sudden, I'm suffering from hypothermia, and I'm dying, and I have no <laughs> health. And these bosses at the beginning of the game that I usually know how to cheese my way through, I couldn't cheese my way through. I had to actually learn how to block with a shield. I've never used a shield in that game in my life, but I'm blocking and <laughs> backing up and slashing and backing and blocking and slashing. And I'm killing God, things like it's the like way they the implemented a uh, Witcher uh, yeah. combat into Skyrim. I'm which, so used. Which, like, Go it's on. not as fluid. Like the movement yeah. in Skyrim is not as fluid, so I can't imagine how difficult that could be. But yeah, no, it's it's I'm I'm playing the game. I think more how the devs intended it to be played. I've always brute forced my way through the game and just loaded up on potions and done my thing. And now it's like potions are less effective if I've been staying up too long and not resting. Um, one of the things I always used to cheese is I would save my level up for when I was in close to death, and I would level up and it would automatically recover all my health. In the new version, oh, you sure. can only level up by sleeping in a bedroll. So I have to strategically plan like okay i need to sleep now so i can get that extra attack bonus so i'm ready to fight the enemy at the end of the dungeon kind of thing just super fun like i'm having a really good time so i'm excited to see where this one takes me i hope i fall in love with the game all over again but like i said long change the system we're already overdue here so i'm going to cut it there i can always gush about it next week on the show again once i discover more secrets so um i think that'll do it for us as a show actually so thank you all for listening Hope y'all had as much fun listening as we had recording. We'll be back again next week. We'll do the whole thing all over again. Bye bye. See you real soon. Adios.